Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Mr. P, another Daily Dose Positive post. What's going on Wednesdays? Have you want to look at it? I've had the Daily Dose Positive post, my word, Wednesdays. I was posting things on Tuesdays and Thursdays and giving them a different name. And I just had, I realized, man, sometimes you're attempting to do too much. I'm not an octopus. I don't have eight tentacles. I can't reach out and grab everything at one time. When I first started doing my videos, I wanted to do shirts. I wanted to do hats. I had to put my hand in everything. And sometimes you just got to take a step back and say, you know what? One level at a time. One level at a time. There's nothing wrong with being a multitasker, but if you're not completing one task before you start multitasking the other things, you might want to slow down from being a multitasker and complete one task at a time. One level at a time. Like, what's the main purpose? And for me, the main purpose for speaking is speaking. It's not about the hats. It's not about the t-shirts. It's not about the, the clothing line and the brand in this moment right now. It's about the speaking. It's about encouraging and inspiring people to really look deep within and see how they can change their life. It's about encouraging and inspiring people to really look deep within and see how they can change their life. Like, treat your life like a construction site. Like on the construction site, there's always tons of equipment. You got bulldozers, you got backhoes, you got bobcats, you got excavators, you got dump trucks, you got loaders, you got cranes, you got lifts. All those different tools or pieces of equipment are focused on one goal, which is to build something new and something solid. So you have to think about the things that you have in your life. Are they building you up or are they tearing you down? Like your life is truly like a construction site. The other day I was riding and I seen a construction site and I seen an excavator out there. And I'm like, wow, I know an excavator is meant for digging, but like, is it a Webster's Dictionary definition for that? Like what actually is an excavator? And an excavator, according to Webster's Dictionary, excuse me, is a person who removes earth carefully and systematically from archaeological sites in order to find buried remains. An excavator also is a large machine used for removing soil from the ground, especially on a building site. So two things, a large machine or a person doing an archaeological systematic experiment to discover something man i'm like wow sometimes are we as an individual are our own personal excavators because internally we're digging down deep and removing soil removing problems removing hurt removing pains removing broken relationships we have to dig down deep and get down to fresh clean soil within our own lives so we can start to construct and build a new foundation for our lives excavating means digging deep down or going down even further so an excavator is used to dig excavating it means the same thing digging down deeper going in even further and a lot of times when things occur in our life, when problems occur in our life, it's really not the big thing that you get into it with a person about, or it's really not the last thing that happened that tears you down. It's usually something from deep down inside that you've been holding on to for a while that you just suppress. You just suppress. You just keep pushing it down. And eventually, anything that you continue to push down, eventually, one day is going to come back up. So if you do the work and be proactive instead of reactive and you actually start digging down yourself and start excavating the past of your life and the problems and the pains and you deal with that, then you can start to lay a new foundation for the life that you want to have. You can start constructing the life that you want to live, but it's all up to you. It's all on you. So after you're done excavating and you're You've pulled everything out, then you have to load that stuff up. And for some people, they like to get pen and paper like I do. They like to write everything down. They like to write down problems. They like to write down issues. I've heard speakers say, hey, write it all down, tear it up, throw it away, and never go back for it. Hey, write it all down, set it on fire. And as you setting it on fire or you tearing it up, that signifies that I'm done with this. It's over. Never to come back. 
excuse me, however you have to load it up and dump it out, that's what you need to do. However you have to load it up and dump it out, that's what you need to do because yesterday is gone and tomorrow's not promised. So daily, I wake up and I tell myself I'm proud of me, that I love me. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow's not promised. Focus on today. Daily, you should be constructing your life, the life you want to live. Daily, you should be building up your children, helping to shape their life and to lay a good, solid foundation for them to build upon. So they don't have to go through some of the th same things that you went through. Maybe as far as family pains or <clears throat> maybe as far as family pains. I'll just leave it at that. So daily, you should be reconstructing your life to build the life that you want. Daily, you should be excavating any past hurts or pains or problems and you should be dumping it out and throwing it away. Or you can just have one big massive dump. But it takes time. That's completely up to you. But in order to live the life that you want to live, you're going to have to start to construct your life. And part of doing construction and new growth and new building starts with tearing down, building back up. When I joined the military, it was sort of like you got the basic training and they completely tear you down. They strip you of all your civilian clothes. They basically, they strip you of your first name and you go by last name. Like they take things away from you, from what you know as norm. And then they start to build you back up and into a soldier, not to who they want you to be, but in the way that you should carry yourself. So in order for you to have anything new, you must tear down the old things first. In order for me to be a successful speaker, I must tear down the old things and the old hurts of my past. How can I tell somebody else to be inspired in life if I'm not inspired myself? You get it? In order for you to really do something different, you have to tear down the old things of the past. You have to. It's a must. You don't do it without that. And once you tear those old things down of the past and you continue to construct new levels of your life and you continue to build new solid foundations, you're not even looking back in the past anymore. I'm quite sure once Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team and he went out and he kept practicing and practicing and he went on in North Carolina, he wasn't thinking about being cut anymore. He just knew in order for me to be as successful as I want to be, I have to continue to work and I have to continue to build on top of this next level. Kobe Bryant's first game in the NBA, his first five shots he missed and a couple of them was air balls. Did you hear Kobe Bryant talking about that? He continued to go to the gym. He continued to work. He continued to shoot. Is what you have to do. You must do it. Steve Jobs got fired from Apple, a company that he started. But when they fired him, he didn't go home and sulk and cry about it. He went back to work and he created new business. He's created Pixar. He created a company called Next. Pixar created Pixar Animated Toy Story, which is one of the highest at one point in time, the highest gross animated movie. He started to build on the new things. And then what happened? Apple bought out Next. And when Apple bought out Next, Steve Jobs had to come back. And he created the iPhone. So after you get dick done digging down and excavating all the hurts, problems, pains, you load that stuff up and you dump it out, then you have to start constructing new levels of your life. Where do you dump it out? That's completely up to you. But for me, I dump all my problems on God. And I can use the word dump on God because God is the only one that can handle it. God is the only one that can handle it. He's the only one that can truly see us through and help us get to the life that we want to live. So you have to be willing to load it up, dump it out, excavate your life, man excavate your life. And once you get done excavating your life and you start to construct and build the new you, you'll find a happier place. Stop living your life for everyone else and start living your life for you. I was watching a video this morning with Rick Ross and he was saying, um, and I don't, I, I usually listen to Rick Ross when he first came out. I don't listen to him too much anymore, but he was saying something to me that was very powerful. He was kind of walking through his driveway and he was showing his cars and his Ferraris and stuff. He's like, man, all this stuff don't mean nothing. 
He like, it don't mean nothing to me because it's costing me money. It's not bringing me money. Like you talk to me, show me like the deed or the mortgage on your duplexes, on your houses that you're buying, on your property that you own. Like this Rick Ross, the big boss. And he's always, you know, he's talked about flossing. He's talked about being flashy. And now he's talking about maintaining wealth, buying property, buying real estate. Like the people that's really real, the people that's really making money or having money, they're not talking about the turn up no more. They're not talking about living life for the moment. They're not talking being flashy. They're talking about things that holds value. They're talking about life. Don't get wrapped up in this social media world thinking that social media is real life. Most of the people on social media is probably faking. So you're going to live your life based off of what somebody else put on the camera? And I'm saying that even as you watching me and listening to me. You've heard me tell my stories. You heard me talk about living in my sister's basement. You've seen me show the videos. If not, go to my YouTube page. Mr. P77 at YouTube. Go to my YouTube page and go back to my beginning videos. Real life is not always going to be portrayed on social media. Social media is no more, no different than the news. People are going to put out the story that they want you to hear. But what I'm here to do, I'm not here just to motivate you because motivation is temporary. I want to inspire you. I want to encourage you to change your life as you see me go through the process of changing my life. Like this is not easy. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. But it's possible for you to do because you look around and you see other human beings doing it. The difference is those human beings was willing to work harder than you might be willing to work. Some human beings outwork me. And that's a problem for me. Because in order for me to live the life that I want to live, I have to outwork others. Or sometimes I have to outwork my mind. You have to. You have to believe when other people don't believe. You got to get up and you got to work. Like... When Rick Ross first came out, people were talking about how he was a sheriff and maybe snitching and everything else. He kept working through the process. He kept building his brand. He kept building MMG. He kept constructing his life, never looking backwards about what other people were saying. He kept constructing his life, whether you like him or not. You can't deny the fact that the man built and constructed his life in the way that he wanted, at least from my standpoint, he has. So if you're not happy with your life, it's not the person that's telling what you telling you what you can't do. It's you telling you what you can't do. If you're not happy with your life, it's not the job that fired you. It's you doing what is is you doing something that allowed you to be fired from a job. Excuse me. Or is you just depending on a job or someone else to take care of you? Like there's no security in that. There's no security in that. None whatsoever. You are your best investment. Last year when it was daylight savings time, I was watching a video about Warren Buffett. And um, and I know I'm, I'm paraphrasing and I'm going to quote this wrong, but Warren Buffett made a comment like, your best investing is investing in yourself. Now, Warren Buffett at that time was maybe like, he's definitely in the top 10 richest people in the, in America, if not the world. And he said, it's your best investment is investing in yourself. How do you invest in yourself? You find those things that you love, that inspire you. And you spend your every waking moment doing those things. You find those things that you love, that inspire you. And you spend your every waking moment doing those things. Invest in you, believe in you like you believe in Michael Jordan's, believe in you like you believe in Steph Curry hitting the three, believe in you like you believe in Tom Brady going to the Super Bowl. Your best investing is investing in you. That's your best investing. Lisa Nichols made had a quote. She said, <clears throat> leap afraid and get the courage on the way down. And that's deep because most of the time people are always talking about, oh, when my kids leave, I'm going to start doing this. Oh, when I lose this weight, I'm going to start living this lifestyle. Oh, when I get the money, I'm going to do this. 
Oh, when I get the college degree, I'm going to do that. Man, leap afraid and get the courage on the way down. I used to say, oh, before I start getting on these videos, I'm going to get my vocabulary right. I'm going to get my, my uh, grammar proper. Leap afraid and get the courage on the way down. Because once you leap and you start doing those things and you expand the mind, it's not going backwards, man. Once you expand the mind, it's not going backwards. So once I leap and I start shooting 20-second videos, 30-second videos, I got the courage to get on the camera and spill more of my life out. I got the courage to get on the camera and inspire other people to live their life. I got the courage to get on the camera and tell people about my relationship problems that I had. And it wasn't even about the problems. It was about me growing up as an individual and understanding the only way to truly grow as an individual is for me to be my excavator, excavate my life, load up the problems, dump it out and construct the new me. Construct Ethan James Smith in the way that I see fit. Not what the world see, not what the world says. You must construct your life in the way that you want to live it. You must construct your life in the way that you want to live it. Your life is like a construction site, man. You got to dig down in order to build back up. Going into the military, basic training, they tear you down and build you back up. It doesn't happen any other way. Drake even said it. Started from the bottom, now I'm here. Everybody's bottom is different. But we all must start from the bottom and build our way up. You must start from the bottom and build your way up. What do you believe you can achieve? I'm on my way to greatness. But what stops me from getting to greatness is me. And this. And disbelief. Nothing else. No one else. What stops you from getting to greatness is this and you. Nothing else. No one else. It's that simple, man. Everybody may not like what you do. Everybody may not like what you say. Everybody, everyone may not believe what you do. Everyone may not believe what you say. If you believe that you can achieve greatness, then you will. But without putting in the work, you won't. I forgot his name, but when I was watching Evan Carmichael yesterday, he had Guru, Guru somebody, Guru Dash, Guru somebody. And he said, life is like 1% <clears throat> inspiration and 99% perspiration. And he was like, if you give in 99% inspiration and 1% perspiration, then you'll never make it. But if you have the 1% pers inspiration and the 99% perspiration, then you're on your way to success. And to me, what I took that as, all it takes is one small thought to be inspired. But if you don't put that 99% of work in to bring that inspiration into a reality, then you'll never make it. You'll just be dreaming, daydreaming. I quoted Kevin Gates before, hustle, hustle, hustle. Time is ticking. Ain't no time to kick it. Nothing come from sleeping but a dream. Dreams are great. And I'm a huge dreamer. And I believe you should live out your dreams. But one thing about living out your dreams, you and only you can work towards making that dream a reality. You need to believe in you. You need to construct the team around you. Or immerse yourself in a team of believers, dreamers, workers, and doers. You have to believe you can. They have to see the vision. They have to believe the vision. But you must work your vision. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead.
If I believe I'm going to be one of the top motivational speakers in the world and I never look to speak anywhere or I never look to do research or I never look to read and better myself and perfect my craft, then it's dead. Faith without works is dead. In order for you to reconstruct your life to the life that you want to have, you must excavate the problems of the past. You must load them up. You must dump them out and you need to start building a new foundation. And as you want get one level, build up to the next. But each time you go higher, you're going to incur new problems. And that's true. Every day you'll incur new problems. But if you built a solid foundation and even when the wind get rough, you know you're falling back on good ground. Excuse me. If you build your fo- your solid foundation on God's word, you know he'll see you through and he'll carry you through. His word says, I won't put more on you than you can bear. He's carrying the weight on his shoulders. All you're doing is bearing a little pain. You can make it, but you have to believe you can make it. Stop getting caught up in this social media hype of what the who's who and what everyone else is doing and look in the mirror and ask yourself, what am I doing to make life better for me and the people that I love? How will I leave a legacy in this world? What would that dash on my tombstone say? Oh, they only reference the day I was born and the day I was dead. What am I doing in the middle? What are you doing in the middle? It's never too late. I'm 41 years old and it was right before I turned 40 where I really discovered what I wanted for me and what I wanted in life. And I've done some good things in life. I truly have. But I know I have so much more to give. I have so much more to give. You have to believe in you. You have to believe it's possible. And for a while I had a little bit of doubt. New jungle, new environment. But the other day I was at Jiffy Lube in Leander, Texas, getting an oil change. And I started talking to the young man in the back. And I don't I don't know how we got on the subject um, of life, but it's my passion. It's my inspiration. I'm always looking to motivate or not motivate, inspire someone. <clears throat> and I asked him, what did he do besides this? And he was saying, you know, he... Uh, had a black belt in several different styles of martial art. And mind you, this guy had, he had a patch on one of his eyes. I don't know if his eye was missing, if he was blind in the eye, never asked the question, but I know he was wearing a patch. And he said he had several black belts in uh, different forms of martial arts. And I asked him, so how come you're not doing martial arts? And he said, it's not what he loved. I said, so, okay, let me ask you my, my million dollar question. If there's one thing that you could do every day for the rest of your life that you just love to do where you didn't get a dime to do it but all your your family was taken care of what would that one thing be and it's okay if you don't know but it's a question you should ask yourself and he said i would be working on motorcycles and i'm like well what's stopping you from motorcycles and he pretty much said he's afraid he's afraid to jump or money you know school how do i pay for it and i'm like man it's not always about paying for things. Sometimes you can give away things to get things, meaning don't be afraid to intern. Don't be afraid to give away some of your time to learn the craft, to learn the trade. And I was really just speaking into this young man's life. Like anything is possible if you believe. I'm quite sure it's a motorcycle shop on your way home. It's a motorcycle shop around here where you can just go in and volunteer your services. And he's like, you know what? You're absolutely right. It's a place right down the street where I take my bike to get fixed. And I didn't even know he rode. I just thought maybe he wanted to work on motorcycles. And I'm like, oh, yeah, man, that's that's it. Go in there and ask, can you sweep the floor? Can you do something? If you can spare 30 minutes or 45 minutes of your day. And I know what some people think, man, I don't have time for that. I ain't about to be doing nothing for free. And that's the problem. You unwilling to give away some of your time or you unwilling to help someone else to continue to build you up, give to receive. And you're not just giving to receive, but when you give, you will receive. It's just how it works. So <clears throat> he was saying, man, I thank you for that. I appreciate that. That's a great idea. I'm going to go up there today. And next time I see you, I'll probably be talking to you about 
how I'm working on motorcycles. And I'm like, I'm quite sure you are. And I won't tell you good luck because I don't believe in luck. I believe in hard work. So I'll tell you congratulations. And he was just so inspired by the conversation that we had based on me asking him that question. What is it that one thing that you could do every day for the rest of your life that you love doing? When you figure out what that is, it's probably tied to your purpose. It's probably tied to your passion. And when you're chasing your purpose and your passion, you don't have time to worry about chasing money. When you're doing what you love, you never work a day in your life. That's what they say. Go after what you love. And at the end of our conversation, I will, um, he was inspired. He was fired up. He was ready to go to the, the motorcycle place and actually volunteer his services and see what type of help he can get. And I felt great because I was just doing what I love to do, inspiring and encouraging someone to go after their dreams. I don't get embarrassed. I'm not ashamed of making mistakes. I'm not ashamed of my failures. I welcome my failures. I welcome embarrassment. It's okay because I'm learning. And at the end of all that, when I walk back up to the front, it was a woman in there. And she was like, wow, I'm sorry I was eavesdropping on y'all conversation. And I just want to say that was powerful what you were saying to that young man. And she was like, well, do you have a uh, Facebook page or something? Because I heard you say you were going to be a, uh, a motivational speaker, an inspirational speaker. And I'm like, well, yeah, I do. I have an Instagram. I have a Facebook. I have a YouTube. And she's like, oh, that's great because my husband, he's like 40. And he's always watching Les Brown, and I think you would be someone very positive that he can follow. And the reason why I was so inspired by that, because like I already feel like I'm a good speaker, but I know I have work to do. The reason I was inspired by that, because I made a mistake when um, she first walked in, and I did something that I don't normally do. I was kind of judgmental, you know, and not judgmental in a negative way. I probably was judgmental of thinking maybe she has everything together, everything going on, and people don't need inspiration that look that way, and that's not the case. And so I was just taken aback because you never know who you're inspiring when you're talking to someone or who's listening. So don't judge a book by its cover. And then me and the woman, we had the most amazing conversation ever, and I was inspired just to know that I inspired someone else. To know that somebody thought that the words that I use was powerful enough that they would want to go share it with their loved ones or their family member. You never know who you're sowing seed into. So don't be a person to sow negative seed. You should always be looking to sow positive seed into someone's life. You should always be looking to build someone up <clears throat> and not just do the tear down. Save the tearing down for yourself. Tear down yourself first and look to build up others. Tear down yourself first and look to build up others. So never be afraid to look at you in the mirror and start to excavate the problems of your past so you can construct a new life for your present day and moving into your future. You must, you must, you must spend time with you daily hours at a time in order to obtain the things you want. Excuse me. People say they want to live a certain life, but they're not doing the things that make their dreams become a reality. They're dreaming. You say you want to live a lifestyle <clears throat> of entertainers. You say you want to have nice cars. You want to have nice houses. You say you want to have a successful marriage, but you're not doing the thing that successful people do. You're not being honest with yourself. You're not being honest with your partner. You're not putting the hard work in. It don't work if you don't do the hard work. If you don't tear yourself down and lay a new solid foundation and start constructing your life on, it just don't work. As simple as that. Anybody successful, and I listen to a lot of successful people, they talk about how hard the work is. And most of us want to hear how easy it is. And it ain't easy. It's just not easy. And it takes time. But you're not even knowing time is passing when you're working towards your dreams. You're not focused on that because you focused on your purpose and your passion. It's always purpose over profit. 
as I like to say, when you're doing what you love to do, you won't even realize when you become rich or wealthy because you're so busy perfecting your craft at being the best speaker, being the best seamstress, being the best dancer, being the best singer. When the money comes to you, you won't even realize because you've been doing what you love. But when you've been chasing money all your life, you'll probably never find true success or happiness because money comes and money goes. You have to tear down or you have to excavate in order to truly build up the life that you want to live. It's your boy, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Mr. Peen. Your life is like a construction site, man. I'm out. Tune in on Wednesdays for a new video. Look on my YouTube page. You can subscribe to Mr. Peen 77. Follow me at Facebook, Ethan J. Smith. Or check me out on Instagram at Mr. Peen. I'm out.